and welcome to Nellis Hall for game one of this two-game Saturday doubleheader between the Dodge City Conquistadors and the Coffeeville Community College Red Ravens. I'm Shane Hill, so happy you're with us here on US 98 and the Red Ravens Sports Network as we get ready for tip-off just a few moments away. And we have a big one here this afternoon in game one. The Radio Lady Ravens come into this one fifth place in the conference with a 12 and eight record. Of course, the top four teams in this league all get first round buys in the Region 6 tournament. The Ravens two games back of that fourth place spot. They have five games left to try and close that gap. A huge start would be knocking off the number two seed, Dodge City Conquistadors, who come into this one 15th in the nation at a 23 and four record on the year, 17 and four in conference play. So big one coming up for you. We've got stars on lock. It's two teams that went deep into the postseason a season ago. Dodge City and Coffeeville. Let's step away for 60 seconds. Coach Tony Turner joins us before tip right after this on US 98, the Red Ravens Sports Network. Visit MedicalLodges.com or stop by 2921 West 1st in Coffeeville and learn more. Medical Lodges Coffeeville, where they serve and enhance the lives of others with caring hands. This is Community State Bank at work. This is Community State Bank at work in our community. From kids' activities to school programs to funding home and business loans, every day Community State Bank is at work in our neighborhood. Whether you bank at Community State Bank or not, they're working for you every day. Community State Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. I'm Mike Avey, and at Community State Bank, we believe in Coffeeville. Raven basketball coach as we get ready for Saturday's showdown with the Dodge City Conquistadors. And coach, before we start looking at uh, Dodge City and this matchup of two top five teams in the league, uh, big news out of your program this week, a little bit earlier this week, uh, one of your, uh, I guess, uh, most notable players over the last two years made her uh, decision on where she's going to continue her career. Bailey Lehman commits, commits to Rogers State, and I think it's just uh, a really good opportunity for her, obviously. I think, obviously, uh, cool that she gets to go be a little bit closer to home, have some uh, support from her family and friends as she continues her basketball career, and obviously, I think it's a great gift for RSU, one of the best shooters that uh, this conference has seen over the last two years, and she's really grown as a player on both offense and defense this year. Yes, they did get a good one. They got a good player, and, you know, Bailey's going to, every day, every day, she's just going to keep getting better and better because she works extremely hard. She's tough. You know, I can get into her, and she takes it, and she just, she just, I saw she can shoot it. Um, I mean, she's always in the gym working on her craft, and I know she wanted to stay home. She had, she had several offers, opportunities to go a little bit anywhere she wanted, but she decided she wanted to. When she came here, she said, I wanted to be close to home, and which means a lot for a lot of kids. And, um, you know, my son went to Roger State, too, and he wanted to stay close to home. And I, I, that's a very good school, Roger State is. Yeah, and it's. Uh, I'm glad you said that because, like you said, it is so important for uh, – and it's something that sometimes that maybe players don't realize until they're in college, until they make that decision, that how, how important it is to, you know, just see your parents in the stands every now and then, see a friend from school, high school in the stands every now and then. That's, uh, that's something that really, I think, can keep that competitive drive going and keep, you know, on the – uh, yeah, being a college athlete's a grind, and I think you, you obviously need those kind of pick-me-ups every now and then, and being able to see uh, the people you care about in the stands obviously is about as good of a pick-me-up as there is. Yes, and our parents are good night. They're great people. I mean, they're very supportive. I mean, they they always putting stuff on Facebook about the team, and, you know, and they, they're promoting all the players on the team. When someone has a good game, they promote it. Just a very just unselfish family, and they do a good job, and she's another kid that we're definitely going to miss, and um, Roger State definitely got a good one. They Absolutely, did. they did. And coach, the last thing uh, about uh, about Bailey is I think we talked about we touched on this a little bit last week, but uh, just really what's impressed me the most about her this year is uh, her growth on the offensive end of the floor. Where last year, really, um, 
a gr- always been a great outside shooter, but we'd see her kind of set up in the corner, set up on the wing, and just be ready for that catch-and-shoot opportunity. This year, she's getting to the free-throw line more. She's getting into the paint more, finishing around the basket. She's really become a three-level scorer where she can finish inside, she can shoot the mid-range, and she's still, of course, as good as she's always been from beyond the arc. And that's why I think she's... Uh, uh, really taking that next step forward as a premier scorer in this league because now teams look at Bailey Lehman and they don't have to they they can't just game plan for her to be on the arc because she can beat you inside as well. Yes, she can. See, uh, last year you know she tore uh, broke her collarbone in our like our second game of the season, so she was out for the first semester and then the second semester she kind of had you know it's kind of babying a little bit, so just kind of unsure if she could go in there and make those plays. And now she's. Just playing fearless and going out there, being a big, big time baller, and and uh, which she's always has, but she she's stepping up her game. Absolutely, and I know you're excited to have her for another, you know, seven, eight, nine games here. Yeah, hopefully, right. this season. She's, we won, we definitely will miss. <laughs> uh, Coach, we look at this Dodge City team, and this is something I've really been curious about since the first matchup with the Conquistadors. Is how much do you really take away? Uh, from a matchup like that because you went on the road you you fell 106 to 75 and obviously i think uh you know it, there's what there's something to take away from every single game but how much from that game can you really take away and say that uh you know the matchup with dodge was just you know, it was there or wasn't there because they shot 60 percent from the field and hit uh 16 three pointer uh, excuse me uh, they shot 23 three pointers in that game so it was just a historic offensive night for the conquistadors and i'm curious looking back on that how much can you even take away from that on a night that you know will not happen again? <laughs> we talk to Coach Landon Steele all the time, on, we, almost every day, and you know he follows us on the and we win or lose, and you know we follow him, and we every time we have that conversation, we say y'all went 23 or 35 from us from the three point line. Come on, man, take it easy on us. And but no, he 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 even admits this team admits it that they were just on fire that day and they haven't repeated that since and I'm hoping they knock on wood they don't repeat it again but it's it's going to be a I expect it to be a different kind of matchup when they come this way. I agree and I think uh, you know even though they were uh, just uh, historically good from uh, shooting the ball that night I think something that you do have to keep an eye on with Dodge is their depth and of course they have uh, just some really good players across the roster we have Paris Atkins who had 25 Paris at Arena we've talked about her before she was a solid role player for this team She's almost had the the Bailey Lehman growth, if you will, Coach, where solid role player a year ago, a contributor as a freshman, and she's made that leap to star player in this conference. She's putting up uh, about 15 points a game, six rebounds, seven, eight assists. She's turned herself into a quality all-around guard, and uh, she's she's probably Dodge's top all-around player, but they have six, seven players that can get you for 10, 12 points a night. Oh, they're big, and they can shoot, and and their guards are quick, and they're they're, they're smart. They got some smart, a couple D1 transfers, and their guards are very, very smart, and, and they're quick, and they can shoot. So, well, if we got to get out and guard. We're going to have to scheme it up on them and mix up our defenses and, 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 and try to maybe even take a little air out of the ball because if they get going, boy, that basket gets bigger and bigger. <laughs> it sure does. And, Coach, something we talked about a little bit earlier in the show was uh, you know, how you did such a good job of kind of uh, taking the passing lanes a lot of in that second half away from the Barton Cougars. And Dodge City, uh, much like Coffeyville, two of the best teams in this conference at distributing the basketball, two of the better assist numbers in this league. Uh, both teams have really good sophomore point guards. Uh, and uh, so with a Dodge team that really thrives on sharing the basketball, the inside-out mentality that you talk about and working the ball around the perimeter, getting the best look possible, how do you use your defense match up with that and make sure that you force contested shots and difficult possessions uh, versus, obviously, uh, some good looks as the night goes on? Well, we can't ball watch, and we have to get our feet moving. You know, you got to get there. You, you got an early bluff, and we, we, which is a technique we use. And and, and, and when you when, our, when we have our feet moving, it's real effective. And having our hands up, and just being active, and flying around, and talking, and and uh, and just go out there and play fearless. Because you know they have a quick, a good team. And if you come out there with your hands down, they will splash you, and you know, they can flat out shoot it. Coach, your team did a nice job of uh, getting uh, Dodge City, uh, getting trips to the free throw line against the Conquistadors. You do 20 fouls against Dodge. You ended up going to the free throw line 25 times, which is 12 more than they uh, did over the course of the game. And obviously a team that shoots the three as well as Dodge City does, a team that has the depth that Dodge City does. 
uh, getting some of those players in foul trouble and getting your opportunities at the free throw line going to be big in this one at Nellis. Also, what's the key to continuing that success from the first game and maybe drawing some contact against some of their uh, some of their players? Well, we definitely, like I said earlier, we're going to take the air out of the ball a little bit and then and then work the ball, make them guard us, try to. Make and try to get some easy opportunities. You know, getting them in foul trouble is going to be, it's a, it's a plus, but they are very deep. They have probably 10, 12 players that can play. And, um, but we'll have to, we'll just play and play hard and, you know, play, play that fearless basketball and, and go in there and be aggressive, play aggressive. Coach, easier said than done, obviously. But I think something that, you know, uh, it, it, I think it goes unsaid, but it's something that really fires up a defense is a block shot, a, a big momentum changer, a big, you know, kind of game-changing play if you will. And this Dodge City team, you hinted at their size, but they had nine blocked shots in that first matchup with uh, with you uh, out in Dodge City. And I think, you know, it's just one of those plays, kind of like a, you know, a dunk on a, on a men's basketball game, kind of fires the crowd up, fires the team up. I think a big block shot fires the team up the same way. So with this Dodge team's size, how do you create enough separation to kind of prevent them from getting that, uh, that, that, that swagger on the defensive end? Well, we, we use some techniques, what we call fake sandwiches. Those are fakes, uh, ball fakes, getting their heads, get the, getting, their, getting, getting them up in the air and just being patient down there. And if, if we don't have anything, just kick it out, you know, and uh, make them guard and make them come out and chase us. And if we can get that action going, that'll, that'll kind of eliminate, eliminate uh, some of them block shots. Coach, you had a, a lot of players play some heavy minutes against the Conquistadors in that first matchup where we saw uh, some of your uh, second unit get some uh, 15, 20 minutes of game time. And obviously, uh, a theme that we've talked about in the last month is just how important it is for those players to have that experience because you never know when they're going to be needed upon in a more prominent role than they usually are you know you never know when a plus certain player is going to pick up two fouls in the first three minutes you never know when uh, a player is going to go down with an injury knock on wood but uh players like natalia players like ray players like uh j maya play that these players that have really emerged as key players for your second team that give your starters uh a few minutes to breathe every now and then uh good to see that they had some minutes against the conquistadors because at this point in the year with dodge and hutch coming up this week they're going to be needed so definitely going to be needed, and and when we went out there, we were trying to do, we were trying to figure out something because it didn't matter what we did or what kind of shots they took. That ball was going in, and so we were trying different kind of schemes and different kind of matchups, and and it was just they just had that rhythm. So um, you know, unfortunately, we lost, but I think in the big picture, we got players some great valuable minutes, and and we coached it to the end. It ain't like we just gave up. I mean, they battled, they made shots, and we just uh, just that the ball wasn't bouncing in our way and uh, even though we did shoot pretty good I think we shot well it's just they shot a lot better than what we did Coach, I'm glad you said that because that's my final point here tonight is uh, you mentioned, obviously, you think this game at Nels Hall is going to go a whole lot differently because uh, I, I, I don't see 23 made threes on the docket twice in a season, hopefully. Yeah. But uh, you look at this and you're absolutely right with some of these numbers. I mean, your team, 15 assists, only 11 team turnovers. I think it's one of the better uh, finishing turnover numbers for this team in conference play. Uh, the rebound battle, 32-31. You hung right there with them uh, despite all the made shots where maybe you didn't have a ton of chances to rebound the basketball you end up shooting 40 percent from the floor you knock down 11 threes as a team as well you get to the free throw line 25 times there's a lot of things to look at from this first game with dodge city and be happy with how the team played so obviously going into this one kind of anticipating those numbers for dodge's offense to drop just a bit uh, you have to feel good about what you saw for, against their defense, what you saw matching up schematically about how your team can hang, and obviously being at home at Nellis Hall is huge. Oh, yeah, we'll have to definitely play. I mean, we'll have to come out there and, and battle and, and play, again, play fearless and um, go out there with that eye of the tiger, go out and, and just know that we can compete with that team and, and not be afraid and um, make it tough on them. We shoot it just as well as they do, have that same swag that they have, and, and go out and just play the game and go out and battle. That's going to be the difference of, of, of from out there to here, and hopefully we can get our home crowd involved and get some momentum going that way and step up make some big shots. And, and uh, I think the key is going to be how well we, we start out early in the game. Is the vibe any different in the locker room over the last couple of weeks? Uh, is the confidence higher with your group after the win on the road against Butler, the win against Barton. Uh, obviously, we know uh, we, we, we had a feeling heading into the season that your uh, 
your team could hang with anyone in this conference. They were picked to be a top five team for a reason. But with back-to-back -back big wins, one on the road, one at home, against two teams that gave this team problems this year, two teams that went deep into the playoffs last year, is there more confidence in the locker room right now that they can uh, match up w with a Dodge, match up with a Hutch? Do, do these girls feel more fired up than they did a couple weeks ago? You would hope so until after last night. <laughs> Probably our confidence level kind of dropped a little bit and at, in that locker room after the game. But, you know, today's workout was good. I think uh, that long bus ride got us a chance to sit and re reflect back on some of the, th the mistakes we were making on the, in the game against Garden City. And, and I thought the practice today was a great practice. We flew around. The energy level was high. I think they thought we was going to come in and run a lot, but we just came in and locked in and played and practiced and, and got better as a team. Great stuff from Coach Tony Turner as the Lady Ravens get ready for Dodge City on Saturday and look to knock off their third consecutive top five team in the Jayhawk Conference. Coach, thanks so much. We appreciate it. Best of luck on Saturday. We can't wait for the game. Thank you, Shay. Appreciate you. You have a choice on where to go and who you want to be. Here at Coffeeville Community College, you can be you. We can make you workforce ready at one of our technical campuses, be a student athlete, join an honors program or an activity, have a voice with student government, and be involved with student life events. Our school believes in our red and white traditions, providing you with a quality journey in life. Once you experience our campus, you know you've made the right choice. Let us help you make our story your story and become Raven Proud. If you could use a little help around the house, Windsor Place Home Care is the perfect solution for you. Their caregivers are prepared to help you with laundry, meals, housekeeping, shopping, and more. These helpful services are so reasonably priced, you can afford to pay for them yourself. In many cases, Long-term care insurance or other sources provide assistance with the cost. Home is where the help is. Call Windsor Place at Home Care, 800-982-1866. Hello and welcome to Nellis Hall. It's time for the Red Ravens and the Dodge City Conquistadors here this afternoon. Game one of our doubleheader. I'm Shane Neal. So happy you're with us here on the Red Ravens Sports Network in US 98. We've got starting lineups for you here in just a moment. Dodge City going with a little bit of a different look than we saw in the first matchup between these two teams. And uh, let's get you that starting five here this afternoon for the Conquistadors, led, of course, by third-year head coach Landon Steele. Starting for Dodge City at guard, a 5'8 sophomore, number zero, Paris Atkins. At wing, a 5'10 sophomore, number two, Kiriana Jones. At guard, a six-foot freshman, number 11, Layla J. Cameron. At forward, a 6'1 freshman, number 12, Shorna Preston. And at guard, a 5'7 sophomore, number 22, Paris, Santa Catarina. For the Ravens, it will be the 5'5 sophomore out of El Reno, Oklahoma, number two, Titana Woods, Black Owl. The 5'6 sophomore out of Kansas, Oklahoma, number three, Kylie Ortiz. The 5'6 sophomore out of Cleveland, Oklahoma, number 13, Bailey Lehman. The six foot sophomore out of White Shield, North Dakota, number 14, Ivy Fox. And the 5'8 freshman out of Fort Smith, Arkansas, number 15, Karis Washington. One more time, if you're just now joining us for Dodge City this afternoon, it's number zero, Paris Atkins, number two, Kiriana Jones, number 11, J Layla J. Cameron, number 12, Shorna Preston, and number 22, Paris Sita Canarina. For the Ravens, it's number two, Tatana Woods Black Owl, number three, Kylie Ortiz, number uh, 13, Bailey Lehman, number 14, Ivy Fox, and number 15, Karis Washington. Dodge City in the purple jerseys with the gold and white trim. The Ravens in their white home jerseys with the red trim. Coffeyville 12 and eight in conference play. Two games back of that fourth place spot. Looking to chase down a first round by Dodge City looking to hang on to second place with Butler and Barton trying to chase them down. It's the Ravens, it's the Conquistadors. It's a rematch of last year's Region 6 semifinals. Here we go, it's Dodge City off the tip. Santa Catarina hands it off to Layla J. Cameron. They work it now to Jones. This is Preston, the freshman. Nice cut by Jones, goes up and scores. And a quick bucket for Dodge City. Two nothing Conquistadors just underway, about 20 seconds in. 
Ravens with the ball. It's a press defense here from Dodge. Bailey Lehman, the pass to the cutting. Karis Washington, the shot no good. The rebound chased down by Dodge. The Ravens beat the press nicely, just couldn't get the finish. It was a nice closeout by Dodge. And now the other way, no good there by Atkins. Good defense by Tatana. 2-0 Dodge City. We're 40 seconds into this one. Both teams showing they want to play fast early in this one. Kylie hands it off to Bailey. Top of the key. Now works it right. Oh, and now Fox has it again. Eight to shoot for the Ravens. Lehman sends it and got it. Nothing but net for Bailey Lehman. That's a great sign if you're a Raven fan. Bailey Lehman always seems to play her best basketball when they need it most. And she drills her first three of the afternoon. Santa Catarina, one of the conference's best guards, hands it off to Preston. And now this is Layla J. Cameron. Cameron trying to step back, create some space. Now Atkins back to Cameron, sends the three and answers. A three for Dodge City. They hit 23 of those in the first matchup between these two. A historic performance. And there's their first one here this afternoon. Karis Washington hands it off to Bailey. 5-3 Dodge City. Kylie Ortiz works it to Ivy Fox. Now Karis, good ball movement early by the Ravens, but a tough zone defense by Dodge City. Kylie hands off to Karis, seven to shoot. Fox the fake, tries to go baseline against the freshman Preston, puts up a jump shot, too strong on that one. Ravens have had the ball three times, have had three decent looks, only one made shot. Jones goes up strong, draws contact. Dodge City is playing incredibly quick in the first two minutes of this one. And it will be the sophomore, Kiriana Jones, going to the free throw line. She's at a Little Rock, Arkansas. Jones on the season averages about 11 points a game. She's a very solid free throw shooter, about 75%. First one is short. Happy you're with us here on US 98, the Red Raven Sports Network. Game one of our doubleheader here this afternoon. Second free throw up and no good. So the Ravens catch a break. Two missed free throws by Jones. It stays a 5-3 game. Ravens can tie or take the lead right here. Three points for the Ravens, all by Bailey Lehman. She has the ball now on the right wing. Works it right to Karis Washington. Rainbow three off the rim, no good. And tapped out of bounds, last touched by Bailey Lehman. That was a high arcing shot by Karis Washington. Nearly got it to drop. But it is 5-3 Dodge City. Two points for Jones, three points for Layla J. Cameron. That is the scoring so far for the Conquistadors who come in, the number 15 ranked team in the country. Nice find by Santa Catarina, but Preston can't finish inside. Raven defense has found a way to get a couple empty possessions. Fox for the lead, and it's off the rim, no good. Ravens just one made shot in the first two minutes, 45 seconds, but are only down by two. The defense has held their own against Dodge. That shot short by Atkins. Fox able to tip it up in the air, and it ends up with Karis Washington. This Dodge team not quite as big as Barton, but they are more skilled than the Barton Cougars are in terms of shooting and creating offense. Tatana Woods Black L looks for a pass. Now finds Kylie Ortiz on the right wing. Kylie down to the corner. This is Karis Washington. Washington spins. Jones stays in front. Kylie attacks Santa Catarina. Goes to the left hand, and Kylie ties the game. Five points for the Ravens, three for Lehman, two for Ortiz. You love to see your stars get involved early. But speaking of stars, there's Santa Catarina with a layup. 7-5 Dodge. Fast-paced offensive action early in this one. Fox, Ortiz. Kylie gets a screen. Kylie steps back for the lead. Kylie got it. Five quickly for Kylie Ortiz. And a first lead of the afternoon for Coffeyville. Cameron looking for her second three. That one in and out. Rebound taken by Kylie. 8-7 Ravens, four minutes in. Hand off to Tana. Tatana, nice ball fake. Hands off to Fox. Fox goes up, a lot of contact, no call. Empty possession for the Ravens. Layla J. Cameron. Tries to get into the paint, kicks to the corner, Atkins. Atkins got a step on Lehman, Lehman able to close it. Atkins puts it up, no good, rebound Lehman. And Paris Atkins, who comes into this one averaging 15 a game, that's second on the team. She's 0 for her first three. Kylie hands off to Karras. 
Five and a half to go first quarter. 8-7, Ravens lead. Karras the attack, throws it up. Won a foul, they don't get it. Karras keeps it alive, and the Ravens get a second opportunity. Tatana, pass to Bailey. Ten to shoot for the Ravens. Lehman has three, Kylie Ortiz has five. Tatana, got to get a shot up. Five seconds, Kylie, the fake, steps into a jump shot. And that one left short, rebound taken by Atkins. Halfway through the first quarter, Ravens eight, Conquistadors seven. A huge game for playoff standings in the Jayhawk Conference. Santa Catarina's got two points, she has the basketball. Crossover right, nice pick and roll, and Jones is gonna give Dodge City the lead. She's got four points and a little miscommunication there by the Raven defense. Too easy of a shot there for Dodge. 9-8, Karis Washington has it. We see Natalia Jones at the scorer's table. Ivy Fox trying to give the lead right back, and that spins out. Ivy still looking for her first points of the afternoon. Atkins hands off Santa Catarina, nice ball fake. Gets inside, layup short, and the ball batted around, ends up with Cameron. Atkins has it now, second chance here for Dodge. Santa Catarina with the basketball, gets a screen. Pick and pop, this is Preston, down low to Jones. Jones, no, it will stay with Dodge, eight on the shot clock. Parker and Jones checking in, our first media time out of the afternoon. Ravens down 9-8 and a good one early. We're back in 60 seconds on US 98, the Red Ravens. vinyl plank, tile, area rugs, and more in many styles, brands, and colors. New furniture always brightens a home. We have a great selection of furniture, including sofa sets, recliners, and mattresses. Economy to premium, in stock and ready to brighten your home. Shop now at your local derailed commodity flooring and furniture. Brazelton in Independence, Kansas, and Joplin and Butler, Missouri. Taco Mayo's new filet ole steak bowl is piled high with fillet minon. It's filet mignon. A heaping bowl loaded with refried beans, Mexicali rice, cheddar jack, sour cream, and tender filet mignon. It's filet mignon. Filet mignon. Uh, filet mignon. Filet mignon. Filet mignon. Savor the juicy filet ole steak bowl stacked with filet mignon and only from Taco Mayo. That's a wrap. No, that's a bowl. Coffeeville, we'll see Natalia Jones and Alexis Parker into the game for... Karis Washington and Ivy Fox. I'm Shane Neal. It's US 98, the Red Raven Sports Network. Happy you're with us here for a big time Saturday afternoon doubleheader, a rematch of the Region 6 semifinals from a year ago, Dodge City and Coffeeville. Inbound pass goes to Mia Jordan, the substitution for the Conquistadors, and she finds Jones down low, who's got a quick six for Dodge, and they lead it 11 to eight. Tatana Woods blackout pass to Kylie. Kylie's got five for the Ravens. Layman's got the other three. Here's Titana. Titana has it on the left wing, looking for somebody to come open. Titana's got to make a move now, going left, cut off by Santa Catarina. Ten to shoot for Coffeyville. Down low to Parker. Parker back to Bailey. Sends a deep three in and out. Parker able to get a hand on it, but it's taken by Santa Catarina. Here comes Dodge City and a nice pass inside. Jordan with the pump fake and got the bounce. And that's what Dodge City is so dangerous. They got the size, they've got the speed, they've got the IQ. And they've got a five point lead. Kylie Ortiz hands off Natalia Jones. Jones has it top of the key, pass left to Bailey Lehman. Lehman the attack, Lehman goes to the left hand, lays it in. Five for Lehman now, along with five for Ortiz, and the Ravens back within a score. Under three to go, first quarter, 13 to 10. Dodge City with the lead and the basketball. Santa Catarina tries to go right at Woods Blackow. Jones takes the three and Jones in and out. Rebound taken by Tatana. Raven defense gets the stop. Tatana Woods Blackow looking for a pass. Tatana needs somebody to come open. There's Kylie. And now back to Tatana, down low to Parker. Parker guarded by Jordan. And that one thrown out of bounds, turnover by the Ravens. We'll see Ray Richardson check in for the first time today. She comes in for Woods Blackow. But two and a half to go in the first quarter. Dodge City has come out very aggressive offensively, but have not been able to pull away from this Raven team. We've seen in a lot of the Ravens struggles this year in conference play, 
They've gotten off to double-digit deficits in the first quarter. That has not happened today. Santa Catarina, Mia Jordan, ball fake. Parker stays in front. This is now number four, Taya Morgan. And now Jones. Jones has a team high six for Dodge. She spins off of Ray Richardson, throws it up, and a late foul call against Natalia Jones. So Jones will go to the foul free throw line after the foul on Jones. It'll be Kiriana Jones at the line after the foul on Natalia. Kiriana 0 of 2 at the stripe, but she does have six points. First free throw on its way, and good. Kiriana Jones has really carved out a role for herself this season, averaging 11 points and five rebounds a game. And she goes two out of two on this trip to the line. 2.05 to go, first quarter. Dodge City 15, Coffeyville 10. Kylie Ortiz, the ball fake. And now gets to the corner, sends a three, it's good! Kylie's got eight in the opening quarter. And it's a two point game, nothing but net for Ortiz. Jones works it right, this is Taya Morgan. Morgan picked up by Natalia Jones, Santa Catarina. Looking for the pick and roll, it's not there. Back to Paris, Santa Catarina sends the triple, it's good. What an answer from the Dodge City sophomore. 18-13. Two very talented teams. Who will blink first? Nice pass down low to Lehman. That shot no good. Rebound pulled down by Jordan and Dodge City. Five point deficit, Raven defense needs a stop. Taya Morgan, Mia Jordan. Jordan tries to attack Parker. Now the drive, pull up jump shot. That one off the rim no good from Monique Ru uh, Rudder. And here comes Kylie the other way. Kylie's got eight for the Ravens. Works it left to Natalia. Natalia hands off to Bailey. Ortiz, screen comes from Parker and that's an offensive foul. So an offensive foul against Alexis Parker. And we'll see Karis Washington back in. She comes in for Lehman. Tana Woods Blackout also back in for Kylie Ortiz. So Ortiz and Lehman combined for all 13 points so far in the opening nine minutes. But now we'll see what the Raven offense can do with both of them on the bench. Santa Catarina, Mia Jordan had a little bit of space and then throws a pass away. Jordan's hit some three point shots this year. She's not great at it, but a little surprised she didn't send that with the space she had and instead tried to find a down low short of Preston. That's a turnover. Raven defense gets a stop. They have a chance to cut it back to a one-score game. 40 seconds left, first quarter. Tatana with a crossover. Hands off Washington. Now Richardson. Richardson the handoff to Natalia. All five Ravens have touched it on this possession. Karras. Woods blackout, pick and roll. This is Natalia. Natalia back to Tatana. Eight to shoot. Dodge City defense has done a nice job not allowing any openings. Richardson blocked by Preston. And now 15 seconds, it's a two on one for the Conquistadors and coming the other way, no good. Santa Catarina with the rebound, hands it off and that layup is good from Taya Morgan. Five seconds left for the Ravens, they're down by seven. Ray Richardson, three seconds, gotta throw one up, it's blocked again by Preston. Back to back, Ray Richardson field goal attempts denied by the freshman Shorna Preston and Dodge City gets the last four points of the first quarter. We get in the second, 20 to 13 conquistadors. We're back in 60 seconds on US 98, the Red Raven Sports Network. Call NDB in Coffeeville and then relax. NDB can protect your assets and save you money. They represent numerous insurance companies so that they can help you find the right insurance at the right price for you. NDB at 812 West 11th in Coffeeville. Call Ben Veets at 620-251-1970 and relax. At Coffeeville Regional Medical Center, we take seriously our responsibility of caring for our friends and neighbors. We are your regional health care system, caring for Southeast Kansas and Northeast Oklahoma. With comprehensive technology and experienced medical staff, caring medical professionals, and a 24-hour emergency room staffed with emergency medicine physicians, we are people you know and healthcare you trust. For more information, visit our website, crmcinc.org. 
trail by seven as we start the second quarter here from Nellis Hall on Shady Oats, US 98, the Red Raven Sports Network. Bobby Mills shot just 29% in that first quarter. Kylie Ortiz and Bailey Lehman, five of eight. The rest of the team, 0 of nine. But just down by seven, Tatana Woods Blackout hands it off to Ivy Fox. It's Fox Washington, Woods Blackout, Parker, and Jones. That one was deflected by Santa Catarina, but Tatana able to keep the possession alive. Woods Blackout, that one nearly stolen. Natalia Jones able to come away with it. This Dodge City defense swarming early in the second quarter. The attack by Natalia, and she's fouled on the way up. Heck of a drive by Natalia Jones. The foul was called against number 11, Layla J. Cameron. So we're going to see J. Maya Lyons move to the scorer's table. Jones' first free throw is good. First player not named Ortiz or Lehman to put a ball in the bucket for the Ravens today. It comes in the second quarter. Natalia trying to go two for two at the stripe and does. Ravens get the first two points of the second quarter. They're courtesy of Natalia Jones' free throws. So we'll see Jamiah Lyons in for Alexis Parker. Dodge City basketball, their first possession of the second quarter. They lead it 20 to 15. 9.27 to go in the first half. This is Paris Atkins. Atkins, the second leading scorer for the Conquistadors, and there's her first bucket of the game with a mid-range jump shot. From the right elbow, Atkins finally gets one to go after an 0 for 3 first quarter. Ravens down by seven. Fox to Woods Blackout. Ravens down seven, hand off Natalia. Natalia looking for a pass. Down low to Ivy Fox. Fox attacks. Fox is fouled on the way up. And that'll go against Shorna Preston. So two, equi two quick fouls against the Conquistadors here in the second quarter. This, this matchup, of course, in the last two years has been a really fun chess match where Dodge City's been one of the league's elite, as have the Ravens. And we've got two of the league's best coaches, Tony Turner and Landon Steele. Landon Steele, of course, last year's coach of the year. Ivy Fox goes one out of two. Rebound collected by Cameron. Ravens three out of four in their last trips, two trips to the line. They trail by six. Santa Catarina now on the right wing. Pass to Cameron. Cameron fakes the three. Hands off to Atkins. Atkins scored on their last possession. Now back to Preston. And now Jones. Jones had six points early for Dodge. Cameron hands off Santa Catarina. Eight to shoot. Atkins, the ball fake. Gets into the lane. Pull up. Is in and out. Rebound Preston, and Preston goes up and scores it. Shorna Preston had the two blocks on defense and then the putback score on offense. Fox double team, pass gets to Woods Blackow. 24-16 Dodge, their largest lead of the day. Karis Washington to Tatana. Tatana to Karis, Karis down low to Jamaya. Pressure comes, Jamaya nearly threw it away. Tatana finds Jones, two to shoot, pull up, jump shot, Natalia, no, and out of bounds off of Jamaya Lyons. Lame. Bailey Lehman back in for the Ravens, coming in for Natalia Jones. And now Dodge City with the basketball and a chance to take their first double digit lead of the day. Santa Catarina, pass to Cameron. Cameron to Jones, Jones to Santa Catarina. Dodge City has been really impressive so far through the first 12 minutes. Swarming defense, good shots on offense. It's just a very smart, high IQ basketball team. That shot no good, here come the Ravens. Karis Washington trying to get into the lane, nearly lost it, Jemaya able to keep it alive. Here's Fox, fakes, Fox looking for a pass, finds Tatana. 15 to shoot. Tatana Woods Blackout right back to Ivy. Ivy trying to get to the baseline against Preston. Goes up. Raven Bench wanted contact. They didn't get it. And now here comes Dodge with some numbers. Santa Catarina sets the feet, sends the three. It's off the rim, no good. And the Ravens catch a break with an, a missed open shot. Karis Washington goes right at the sophomore. What a dime to Ivy Fox. Karis Washington, we've seen Tony Turner tell us 
that she may play a little bit of point guard later down the road in her career, and that's shades of maybe a future point guard. What a dime. Santa Catarina, Preston fakes the three, guarded by Lyons. Preston goes at Lyons and draws the foul. Shorna Preston will go to the free throw line. She's not much of a scorer, only averages about seven a game. But she's a very, very good defender. Averaging about two blocks, a steal. And she really holds down that middle of the defense for Dodge City. She'll go to the line. She's a 71% free throw shooter on the season. Dodge City is two of four at the line so far. First one is good. Love the men's game immediately following today. And those two teams, just a half game separate them. They're fighting for a first round home playoff game. One out of two for Preston. It's a seven point lead for Dodge City. Under six and a half to go in the first half. 25-18 Conquistadors. Lehman, Kylie Ortiz. Now with Tatana Woods Blackout. Here's Karis Washington down low to Jemiah. Nice spin move by Lyons and she flipped it up and in. A tough finish with the right hand by Jemiah Lyons. Here's Jones attacking Ortiz and a quick answer. And that's a tough, that's a tough guard there for Kylie. A 5'10 quick sophomore wing in Kiriana Jones. That one deflected. Lehman throws it right to Atkins. Seven point lead for Dodge. They're trying to play with pace. Paris Atkins missed the shot. Lehman might have gotten a piece of it. 27-20, 5.40 to go, first quarter. Tatana slows it down. Karras sends a rainbow three again off the iron, no good. Nearly banked that one in. Dodge City has the ball. They've been comfortably up two possessions for the last eight minutes or so. Santa Catarina, Atkins, cutting Layla J. Cameron, goes up and lays it in, and just another... Really good play call by Landon Steele and the Conquistadors. They lead it by nine. Timeout, Tony Turner. Let's take a quick six minute or quick 60 second break. Six minutes, just under six minutes to go in the second quarter. We'll be right back with the Ravens down by nine on US 98. Wouldn't it be comforting to know that the owner is providing the care? Owner Stephanie Bean with Medical Lodges is proud to supply that tender care in Coffeeville. Skilled nursing services, rehabilitation, adult daycare, and much more are all offered. Visit medicallodges.com or stop by 2921 West 1st in Coffeeville and learn more. Medical Lodges Coffeeville, where they serve and enhance the lives of others with caring hands. This is Community State Bank at work. This is Community State Bank at work in our community. From kids' activities to school programs to funding home and business loans, every day Community State Bank is at work in our neighborhood. Whether you bank at Community State Bank or not, they're working for you every day. Community State Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. I'm Mike Avey, and at Community State Bank, we believe in Coffeeville. 518 to go, second quarter. I'm Shane Hill, 2 the Red Ravens Sports Network. So happy you're with us here for the Saturday doubleheader. Two top five teams in the Jayhawk Conference, and it's a rematch of last season's Region 6 semifinal game where the Ravens won in overtime. Karis Washington has it on the right wing, hands it off to Bailey Lehman. Lehman and Ortiz combined for 13 in the first quarter. They have yet to score here in the second. Kylie has the basketball. Works it to Tatana, now Bailey. Bailey hands it off to Tana, to Tana. Back to Bailey, five to shoot. Jemiah traveled. Double team came at a really opportune time there for the Conquistadors, and they just, feels like, you know, Coffeeville hasn't played a bad game. It just feels like Dodge City really hasn't made many mistakes. On defense, they've been in the right place at the right time. They're taking smart shots. They're in the right place on the offensive glass. I mean, you can see why this team is 23 and four. Paris Atkins hands off Layla J. Cameron. Cameron trying to put the Conquistadors up by double digits. That one deflected by Tatana. We'll stay with Dodge with 13 on the shot clock. Dodge City hit 23 three-point shots in the first matchup between these two teams. They scored 106 points. That one gets to Jordan. Jordan shot no good, got her own rebound, goes back up and draws the foul. 
And Jones and Washington could not box out there. The foul will be on Karras, and Mia Jordan will head to the free throw line. The freshman out of Gold Coast, Australia. One of three players from Gold Coast, including Layla J. Cameron and Shorna Preston. Two free throws, one out of two for Jordan. It's a 10 point lead for Dodge City. Ravens trying to now chip away. Kylie Ortiz fakes the shot. Layla J. Cameron, a little bit of contact. Ravens wanted a foul, didn't get one. Now Lehman has it. Lehman sends it with a hand in the face. It's off the rim, no good. Preston able to pull down the rebound over Natalia Jones. Atkins cut off by Titana. This is Taya Morgan. Morgan hands it off to Cameron. Cameron. And now the, it's Morgan, and Morgan took an extra step. So a giveaway by Dodge City, and that's the freshman, Taya Morgan. That's what may be even more scary about this Dodge team, with the exception of Santa Catarina and a couple others, Paris Atkins and Kiriana Jones. This team very young for Dodge. A lot of freshmen on this team. This team's going to be very similar and very scary next year as well. Pass gets down low to Natalia. Nice ball fake by Jones. And she goes up and scores it. Four for Natalia in the first half. Got Mia Jordan in the air. Smart high IQ play there by the sophomore. Taya Morgan, corner three, looking to answer. That shot is well off. Rebound taken by Karras. Ravens get a score, get a stop. Now trying to piece together some scores. Karras now will attack. Step into a jump shot, missed it. Rebound taken by Atkins. Here comes Dodge City. Paris Atkins, she can fly with the ball in her hands. Now she backs it up. Hands off to Morgan. Under three to go in the first half. Ravens down 30 to 22. And Preston, that shot denied. It was Natalia Jones who got a hand on it. Ravens get a steal. Natalia slows down. Pass to Kylie. Screen set by Jones. Ravens looking for a shot. Down by eight. Bailey Lehman off a screen. Taya Morgan able to close out. This is Kylie. This is Karras. Top of the key. Ten to shoot. Karras attacking the much larger Preston. And it spins off the rim. No good. Preston again. We talked about one of the anchors of this Dodge City defense. She shows it on that one. Here's Layla J. Cameron. Pass to Morgan. Morgan to Cameron. Now down low. Preston on the elbow. Back to Morgan. Morgan with the fake. The extra pass. Cameron had it poked by Kylie Ortiz. It will stay with Dodge, 12 on the clock. Now we see the return of Santa Catarina, and for the first time tonight, we'll see number three, Flora Lukau, a freshman out of Marburg, Germany. Fox and Parker back in for Coffeyville, coming in for Washington and Jones. Two sevens eating to go in this first half. Ravens have held their own, but. I think Dodge has definitely looked like the, the stronger team in this one so far just because of how complete their performance has been. But Ravens just a run away from maybe potentially getting back in it. That shot no good by Cameron. And out of bounds, last touch by Jordan. Raven fans wanted an over the back. They will get the ball. That was last touch by Mia. Good size on this Dodge City team. Jordan is 6'3". Jones, six foot. Preston, six one. Cameron, six foot. Tatana, screen from Parker. Hands off Lehman. Lehman tries to turn the corner. Now Fox, 15 to shoot for Coffeyville. Long possessions for both of these teams in the first half. Bailey Lehman, the drive, the kick. Tatana. Tatana down low to Fox. Fox fouled. And that'll be against Mia Jordan. Ivy going back to the free throw line for the second time this quarter. First on Jordan, third personal. So after two fouls in the opening minute of the second quarter, Dodge has done a nice job of not putting themselves in danger of going into the bonus. First one, no good from Ivy. She's now two of four at the line, or excuse me, one of three at the line. Ravens are now three of five at the line here in the second quarter. Something that Coffeyville has been very up and down with this season. And Ivy, I guess they're going to call that one the first one. I don't, know if the, I don't know if the initial free throw was rushed or what was going on there, but Ivy knocks down the second one. So it's 30-23. to 23. 
a bit of an odd sequence there, but the Ravens down by seven, looking for another defensive stop. Tara Morgan, they work it to the corner. That's a great look for Cameron, and it's in and out. Lucky break for the Ravens. Parker pulls down the rebound, but a double dribble against Alexis Parker, trying to get it to Tatana Woods Blackout. A little bit of a freshman mishap there. Coffeyville had a chance to get it back down to a two-score game, but give the ball right back to Dodge City. This will be Lukau to inbound it. Inbound goes to Santa Catarina. Paris Santa Catarina hands it off. Taya Morgan. Jones now has it. Jones has been great in the first half. Morgan sends a three in and out. Another close call there by the Ravens, but they get the stop. Here comes Bailey. Minute five to go, first half. Ravens down seven, looking to chip away. Ivy Fox, extra pass, Bailey. Bailey gets to the baseline. Bailey throws it up, left it short. And an empty possession by the Ravens. Rebound taken by Jones. Santa Catarina slows it down, calls out a play. Woods blacked out on her. Pass goes to the free throw line, and Jones, nice ball fake. Jones, no good. Rebound Jordan. Jordan trying to go back up. Nearly lost it. Jordan goes up. No. And rebound battled for Jordan. Takes it away from Lehman. Lays it up and in. And one. And a big bucket for Mia Jordan. The Ravens had a couple opportunities to get that ball back. Could not. And now Mia Jordan with a chance to put Dodge back up by 10 after the second foul on Alexis Parker. Free throw on its way and good. 33-23, shot clock is off. 22 seconds left for Coffeyville. Tatana works left, guarded by the freshman Lukau. Kylie down low to Ivy Fox. Fox the spin, very tough turnaround shot, no good. And now 10 seconds here for Dodge. This is Jones. Jones coming up on the right wing. Jones hands it off to Lukau, right back to Jones. Five seconds, Jordan sends the three. Missed it. Rebound Alexis Parker. And that's how the first half comes to an end. Coffeyville, not a poor performance, but Todd City came on the road ready to play. They've got a 33-23 lead at halftime. Ravens got work to do on both sides of the ball to try and come back against a really good Conquistador basketball team. Let's step away for five minutes. The Red Raven Halftime Show presented by our friends at Community State Bank. Coming up next, we're back at five on US 98 and the Red Raven Sports Network. ready at one of our technical campuses, be a student athlete, join an honors program or an activity, have a voice with student government, and be involved with student life events. Our school believes in our red and white traditions, providing you with a quality education and preparing you for the next journey in life. Once you experience our campus, you know you've made the right choice. Let us help you make our story your story and become Raven Proud. If you could use a little help around the house, Windsor Place at-home care is the perfect solution for you. Their caregivers are prepared to help you with laundry, meals, housekeeping, shopping, and more. These helpful services are so reasonably priced, you can afford to pay for them yourself. In many cases, long-term care insurance or other sources provide assistance with the cost. Home is where the help is. Call Windsor Place at-home care, 800-982-1866. Make your home more comforting with help from Derailed Commodity. Update your flooring with the area's largest selection of in-stock carpet, luxury vinyl plank, tile, area rugs, and more in many styles, brands, and colors. New furniture always brightens a home. We have a great selection of furniture, including sofa sets, recliners, and mattresses. Economy to premium, in stock and ready to brighten your home. Shop now at your local Derailed Commodity Flooring and Furniture, Brazelton in Independence, Kansas, and Joplin in Butler, Missouri. This is Meat Mountain, and up there on the summit awaits the all-new filet lay Steak Bowl from Taco Mayo. A heaping bowl filled with Mexican favorites and literally erupting with filet mignon. The filet lay Steak Bowl can be yours if you make it past Chuck Steak Canyon and the Deadly Sirloin Abyss. Filet mignon beckons, my friend, on the meaty, mighty pinnacle of beefdom. The filet lay Steak Bowl from Taco Mayo. Welcome to Meat Mountain. 
Got a car? Maybe a motorcycle or even a boat. Do you rent or own your own home? If you have any of these, call NDB in Coffeeville and then relax. NDB can protect your assets and save you money. They represent numerous insurance companies so that they can help you find the right insurance at the right price for you. NDB at 812 West 11th in Coffeeville. Call Ben Veets at 620-251-1970 and relax. Coffeeville Regional Medical Center, we take seriously our responsibility of caring for our friends and neighbors. We are your regional health care system, caring for Southeast Kansas and Northeast Oklahoma. With comprehensive technology and experienced medical staff, caring medical professionals, and a 24-hour emergency room staffed with emergency medicine physicians, we are people you know and health care you trust. For more information, visit our website crmcinc.org. When you need to rely on a nursing facility for the care of a loved one, wouldn't it be comforting to know that the owner is providing the care? Owner Stephanie Bean with Medical Lodges is proud to supply that tender care in Coffeeville. Skilled nursing services, rehabilitation, adult daycare, and much more are all offered. Visit medicallodges.com or stop by 2921 West 1st in Coffeeville and learn more. Medical Lodges Coffeeville, where they serve and enhance the lives of others with caring hands. This is Community State Bank at Work. This is Community State Bank at Work in our community. From kids' activities to school programs to funding home and business loans, every day Community State Bank is at work in our neighborhood. Whether you bank at Community State Bank or not, they're working for you every day. Community State Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. I'm Mike Avey, and at Community State Bank, we believe in Coffeeville. You have a choice on where to go and who you want to be. Here at Coffeeville Community College, you can be you. We can make you workforce ready at one of our technical campuses, be a student athlete, join an honors program or an activity, have a voice with student government, and be involved with student life events. Our school believes in our red and white traditions, providing you with a quality education and preparing you for the next journey in life. Once you experience our campus, you know you've made the right choice. Let us help you Make our story your story and become Raven Proud. If you could use a little help around the house, Windsor Place at-home care is the perfect solution for you. Their caregivers are prepared to help you with laundry, meals, housekeeping, shopping, and more. These helpful services are so reasonably priced, you can afford to pay for them yourself. In many cases, long-term care insurance or other sources provide assistance with the cost. Home is where the help is. Call Windsor Place at-home care 800-982-1866. Half time here at Nellis Hall with the Ravens trailing 33-23 for the Dodge City Conquistadors. I'm Shane Neal. Appreciate you joining us here on US 98 and the Red Ravens Sports Network. We've had a good one so far. Dodge City, credit to them. They've come on the road and really played a complete game in this first half. Let's look at the first half numbers here like presented by our friends at Community State Bank. The Dodge City Conquistadors shoot 39% from the floor, 18% from three, 56% from the free throw line. Coffeyville, 29% from the field, 33% from three, 67% from the free throw line. Leading the way for Dodge, 10 points for Kiriana Jones, as well as six for Mia Jordan, five for Layla J. Cameron, three for Shorna Preston, two for Paris Atkins, only t- uh, only two for Paris Atkins, and five for Paris at Ken Arena. So the Ravens have done a nice job on the top two scores for the Conquistadors, but it's really been about the depth that we knew that this team had. We talked about it with Coach Turner in the pregame, and then it's shown up here early in this one. Ravens leading scores in the first half. Eight for Kylie Ortiz, five for Bailey Lehman, four for Natalia Jones, four for Karis Wash, or four for Ivy Fox, excuse me, and two for J. Maya Lyons. Ravens trailing on the rebound battle, 24 to 19. Five offensive rebounds for Dodge City has led to eight second chance points. That has been something that has hurt Coffeyville in this one. Ravens have only committed five turnovers, but Dodge City's only committed three. And seven assists dished out by the Conquistadors, only four assists for the Ravens. So we've had a, a good, like I said, the theme of this first half, Coffeyville has not played poorly, 
They have not, uh, you know, really beaten themselves by uh, per se. But obviously this Dodge City team showing why they are a top 15 team in the nation. They are not turning the ball over. They are distributing the ball well. They are winning the rebound battle. They are shooting the ball well. This Dodge City team is a top two team in this conference for a reason. And the Ravens have some work to do in the second half. Let's take a three-minute break. When we come back, we're going to look at some scores from around the conference and get you ready for the rest of the afternoon of basketball that is on this Saturday at Nellis Hall. We're back in three minutes. It's the Red Raven Halftime Show presented by Community State Bank on US 98 and the Red Raven Sports Network. This is Community State Bank at work. This is Community State Bank at work in our community. From kids' activities to school programs to funding home and business loans, every day Community State Bank is at work in our neighborhood. Whether you bank at Community State Bank or not, they're working for you every day. Community State Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. I'm Mike Avey, and at Community State Bank, we believe in Coffeeville. When you need to rely on a nursing facility for the care of a loved one, wouldn't it be comforting to know that the owner is providing the care? Owner Stephanie Bean with Medical Lodges is proud to supply that tender care in Coffeeville. Skilled nursing services, rehabilitation, adult daycare, and much more are all offered. Visit medicallodges.com or stop by 2921 West 1st in Coffeeville and learn more. Medical Lodges Coffeeville, where they serve and enhance the lives of others with caring hands. You have a choice on where to go and who you want to be. Here at Coffeeville Community College, you can be you. We can make you workforce ready at one of our technical campuses, be a student athlete, join an honors program or an activity, have a voice with student government, and be involved with student life events. Our school believes in our red and white traditions, providing you with a quality education and preparing you for the next journey in life. Once you experience our campus, you know you've made the right choice. Choice. Let us help you make our story your story and become Raven Proud. If you could use a little help around the house, Windsor Place at Home Care is the perfect solution for you. Their caregivers are prepared to help you with laundry, meals, housekeeping, shopping, and more. These helpful services are so reasonably priced, you can afford to pay for them yourself. In many cases, long term care insurance or other sources provide assistance with the cost. Home is where the help is. Call Windsor Place at Home Care, 800 982 1866. Make your home more comforting with help from Derailed Commodity. Update your flooring with the area's largest selection of in-stock carpet, luxury vinyl plank, tile, area rugs, and more in many styles, brands, and colors. New furniture always brightens a home. We have a great selection of furniture, including sofa sets, recliners, and mattresses. Economy to premium, in stock and ready to brighten your home. Shop now at your local Derailed Commodity Flooring and Furniture, Braselton in Independence, Kansas, and Joplin and Butler, Missouri. Taco Mayo's new filet ole steak bowl is piled high with fillet mignon. It's filet mignon. A heaping bowl loaded with refried beans, Mexicali rice, cheddar jack, sour cream, and tender filet mignon. It's filet mignon. Filet mignon. A uh, filet mignon. Filet mignon. Filet mignon. Savor the juicy filet ole steak bowl stacked with filet mignon and only from Taco Mayo. That's a wrap. No, that's a bowl. Ravens trail 33-23 at the half here at Nellis Hall. Game one of our doubleheader. I'm Shay Neal. It's US 98. And the Red Ravens Sports Network. Let's look at some scores from around the league here on this Saturday afternoon. We have Butler in action against Independence. And it feels like I'm saying this every single week at this point. But credit to Rob Beckman and the Independence Pirates. They are a tough team in the middle of the conference this year. They are hanging right there with the Butler Grizzlies. 32-28 the score in that game just before halftime. Cali on top of Pratt, 42-27 at the break. Also today, you'll see Garden City and Barton. You'll also see Northwest Tech and Colby and Hutch and Seward County. Those are the games around the conference going on this afternoon. Uh, you'll also, of course, have uh, K-State in action today. They are bouncing back nicely from some tough uh, stretches over the last couple of weeks. They're up 69-56 on BYU with about eight minutes to go in that game. 
And much needed win for a much needed game for K State. They're 15 and 11 on the year. Really need to find a way to beat that BYU team. They're currently up by 13 at Bramlage Coliseum. BYU, of course, a ranked opponent, so that would be a big win to help their tournament chances. Houston gets the win over Baylor in double overtime. Jayhawks will be in action. Pre-game starting in about 45 minutes. Tip off at five o'clock against Texas over on. Uh, greatest Hits 104-1. And then, of course, spring training underway. The Kansas City Royals in action against the Texas Rangers this afternoon. No score in the bottom of the third, but Michael Garcia, who's expected to be the third baseman for the Royals this year, he's two for two this afternoon. And the duo of Alec Marsh and Anthony Veneziano have combined for three scoreless innings, only allowing one hit and striking out three. So that's a look at some scores and updates from around the four states in sports. Second half action coming up in this one. Let's step away for 90 seconds. Ravens, Conquistadors, 20 more minutes to decide. We're back in 90 seconds on US 98 and the Red Ravens Sports Network. And in three weeks, presto, you're starting to speak another language, like magic. I love that Babbel's lessons aren't just robots talking. They're voiced by native speakers, so you get the pronunciation just right. If you want to learn a language, there's no faster, easier, better way than Babbel. 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 Go to Babbel.com and start learning a new language today. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com. It's game day at Jim's house, and the spread is impressive. Mike's already done some damage with the hot wings, and now he's dropping back and going deep for another slice of pizza. I sure hope he brought the Pepto. Mike knows the Pepto-Bismol provides fast, five-symptom relief from unexpected stomach upsets. He's no rookie. <laughs> the way he's throwing back those nachos, he's the GOAT. Be ready for game day with Pepto-Bismol. When you have nausea, heartburn, indigestion, upset stomach, diarrhea. Use as directed, keep out of reach of children. Got a car? Maybe a motorcycle. Ravens trail 33-23 as we get ready for second half action here from Nellis Hall. I'm Shane Neal. It's US 98 in the Red Ravens Sports Network. So happy you're with us on this Saturday afternoon presentation. Both teams heading back out onto the court. Ravens have done some things well. They've gotten some stops holding Dodge City to just 39% shooting and have only turned the ball over five times. But Dodge City showing why they're a top 15 team in the country. Only turning the ball over three times, outwinning the rebound battle, and they currently have a 10-point lead. They'll have the basketball as well as we start the second half. Atkins, Santa Catarina, as well as Preston, Cameron, and Jones. That's a five out there for Dodge. For the Ravens, Ortiz, Woods, Blackout, Lehman, Fox, and Washington. Layla J. Cameron, nice ball fake, gets it to the corner for Parasita Canarina. That shot is off, but a foul called down low against Coffeyville, that'll be on Bailey Lehman. So Bailey Lehman called for her first foul. Dodge City will have a chance to reset. Of course, last year Dodge City, what made them so dangerous was the duo of the Mofowitz wins, Jenna Rose and Leah. And Fox able to get a hand on that, Ravens take it away. So Coffeyville forces a turnover on their first possession defensively here in the second half. Now can they start to chip away at this deficit? Kylie Ortiz gets a big screen from Karras. Nearly had it taken away by Santa Catarina. Titana, screen comes from Fox. Looking for a pick and roll, it wasn't there. Here's Lehman, Bailey sets the feet, sends it, got it! Bailey, Lehman, big shot. It's a seven point game, Lehman's got eight. 33-26, Dodge City in front, but Coffeyville with a big stop, a big score to start the second half, trying to steal back momentum. Atkins, the drive, the kick, this is Preston, handing it off to Santa Catarina. It's a zone look now for the Ravens, and the shot there is off. Out of bounds, last touch by Dodge. 
So the Conquistadors have come up empty on each of their first two possessions of the second half. And the Ravens will take that. Katana brings it up, 33-26. Just over a minute into the third quarter. Kylie Ortiz had a team high eight in the first half. She hands it off to Karras. Karras hands it off to Tatana. Ivy now with it on the right wing. Looking for a pass, gets it to Lehman. Lehman just hit a three on the last possession. Now hands off Kylie, 10 to shoot. Kylie gets a screen. Kylie gets another screen. Ravens got to do something. Three seconds, Tatana, pass to Fox, throws it up. Got it! As the shot clock expires, Ravens have scored the first five of the second half, and it's 33-28. Here's Santa Catarina. Pass to Jones. Jones will take the jump shot and hit it. Nothing but net. And Jones has a game high 12 points in this game on five of eight shooting. Lehman guarded by Atkins, hands it off to Karras. Now to Tana. Fox had the score on the last possession. Now wants to go right at Preston, throws it up. No. Washington tried to keep it alive, but Fox stepped on the baseline. Seven forty-eight to go, third quarter. Ravens have outscored Dodge five-two here in the second half. Early in the second half, but Dodge now with the basketball. Santa Catarina pass to Atkins. Atkins picked up by Ortiz. Ravens playing a little bit softer of a zone look, trying not to trying to keep the Dodge City offense spread out. Preston right back to Santa Catarina. That's elite ball movement there by Dodge City. Little give and go, and it's a nine-point game again. Back-to-back -back scores for the Conquistadors. Kylie Ortiz guarded by Layla J. Cameron. That's a foul against Dodge. That'll be the second on Cameron. Kylie looking to get the ball in. Finds Karras with 15 to shoot now for Coffeyville. Screen set for Tatana. They look for a pick and roll. Tatana goes up, missed the shot. So now Dodge has scored the last four points, trying to halt the early momentum by Coffeyville in the second half. Jones fakes the three, tries to get to the baseline, tries to hand it off, and that was deflected out of bounds. Last touch by Coffeyville. 37 28. Dodge City looking for their 24th win of the season. Conquistador team has not lost a whole lot. Of course, last year they went on a 22-game winning streak from November until the Ravens beat them in the playoffs. Preston with the offensive rebound and finds Santa Catarina for three. And now a 7-0 run for Dodge after the 5-0 run from the Ravens. Fox down low, goes right at Preston, throws it up, no. Quick stop for the Dodge City defense. And on the other end, Atkins lays it in. It's a 14-point lead, a 9-0 run for Dodge. And they have their largest lead of the afternoon, 42-28. Tatana attacks again, throws it up, got it. Tatana Woods blackout for two. Makes it 42-30, first points of the afternoon for Tatana. But after the three by Lehman and the Two by Fox, Dodge is heated up, and there's a three from Layla J. Cameron, nothing but net. Lehman trying to attack, and there's a foul against Cameron, that's her third. Jones and Parker in for Coffeyville. I see Taya Morgan in for Dodge City. Forty-five thirty, our score, but Cameron picks up two fouls early in the second half. She has three now. Inbound goes to Natalia Jones. Jones to Ortiz. Ortiz hands off to Bailey Lehman. Lehman the drive. Lehman tries to get all the way inside. Might have had it blocked by Taya Morgan. Tony Turner wanted a foul call. He didn't get it. Atkins, nice ball fake, handoff, Preston, Preston to Morgan. Morgan tries to silence the crowd. Off the rim, no good. 
That one was deflected. It will stay with Coffeyville. Lehman tried to get it to Natalia Jones. Tony Turner not happy with the explanation he's being given. Mia Jordan checks in for Dodge. Richardson brings it up for Coffeyville. They're down by 15. That one was deflected, taken by Santa Catarina. Dodge City has their momentum back. Santa Catarina, the nice pivot, hands it off. Morgan, Morgan the drive, the floater, yes. Dodge City has scored 14 of the last 16. After a, the Ravens were able to cut it to five. Now Tony Turner calls timeout. Let's take a quick 60 second break. Dodge has their largest lead of the day. They're up 17. We're back in 60 seconds on US 98 for Red Ravens. Simple diamond alignment for all auto needs. 502 West 8th and Coffeyville. Enough said. Trucking down the highway with the best, the best country mix, US 98. From Shane Neal, it's US 98, the Red Raven Sports Network. Our coverage of Red Raven basketball here on this Saturday. Ravens down by 17, their largest deficit of the afternoon. And after a quick five points by Coffeyville, they cut the deficit to five. Since then, Dodge City is on a 14-2 run. Ravens will inbound it just in front of us here. That one was deflected by Preston. And immediate timeout. How about that? We'll take a break again. We'll be back in 60 seconds on US 98 and the Red Raven Sports Network. Force ready at one of our technical campuses, be a student athlete, join an honors program or an activity, have a voice with student government, and be involved with student life events. Our school believes in our red and white traditions, providing you with a quality education and preparing you for the next journey in life. Once you experience our campus, you know you've made the right choice. Let us help you make our story your story and become Raven Proud. If you could use a little help around the house, Windsor Place at-home care is the perfect solution for you. Their caregivers are prepared to help you with laundry, meals, housekeeping, shopping, and more. These helpful services are so reasonably priced, you can afford to pay for them yourself. In many cases, long-term care insurance or other sources provide assistance with the cost. Home is where the help is. Call Windsor Place at-home care, 800-982-1866. Coffeeville trails 47 to 30, 4.53 to go. In order, Natalia Jones looking to get the ball in and finds Ray Richardson. I'm Shane Neal, it's US 98, the Red Raven Sports Network. Two top five teams, a rematch of last season's Region 6 semifinals, and Dodge City's come out looking like a juggernaut this afternoon. Here's Natalia Jones trying to hand it off. Jordan got a hand on it, that's a steal by Dodge City. And they have snatched all of the momentum here in this third quarter. Santa Catarina down low to Jordan. Jordan got a step on Parker. They want to travel. They don't get it. Santa Catarina there is calling for the travel. Took a couple extra seconds, but they did get the call. And Raven basketball, 424 to go third quarter. Richardson brings it up. Coffeyville has not scored in the last three minutes. Talia Jones with the basketball, trying to attack Shona Preston, and that's a foul against the Dodge City forward. 
Natalia will go to the free throw line, her second trip to the line today. So Janae Black Harmon will come in for Bailey Lehman. Janae Black Harmon has been a more seldom used rotation piece this year for Tony Turner, but it needs a little bit of a spark on the glass, and Janae, one of the best rebounders on the team. Natalia Jones misses the first free throw. One more to come. Jones takes a deep breath and sinks the second. Santa Catarina brings it up, 47-31. Our score, Dodge City on top. That one thrown right to Natalia Jones. Ravens get a steal. Under four minutes to go in the third quarter, Ray Richardson hands off to Kylie Ortiz. Ortiz the fake, Taya Morgan stays in front. Now here's Ray, Ray gets a screen from Parker. If they try to get it down low to Parker, that's a foul against Mia Jordan, and now four fouls against the Conquistadors. Every foul from here on out means free throws for the Ravens. Second foul against Mia Jordan. Richardson looking to get it into Parker. Parker got a step on Jordan and lays it in. What a cut from Alexis Parker. 47-33, Ravens trying to battle against a Dodge team that has really played a fantastic basketball game through three quarters. They try to rip it away from Santa Catarina and a foul is called against Coffeyville. They'll call that on Alexis Parker, her third. Ravens do have some fouls to give, so that is not a shooting foul. It'll be an inbounds play here for Dodge. Inbound goes to Jones. Jones will try to attack Parker, and there's her fourth. Really smart play there by Dodge City. They saw the, the switch defensively. Parker went on to the, the guard. Kiana Jones and attacked and drew the fourth foul, and now we're not going to see Alexis Parker until probably halfway through the fourth quarter. Ivy Fox back in for Coffeyville. First free throw for Jones is good. Jones goes two of two at the line. 49-33, Conquistadors. Ray Richardson, Janae Black Harmon. Trying to get it to Fox, that's a foul against Dodge, and it looks like that might be on Jordan as well. Fox's first free throw is good. Been a quieter day for Ivy Fox after the week she had a week ago. And she knocks down both free throws here. Forty-nine thirty-five after a pair of free throws from Ivy Fox. Ravens with a run could still make this interesting as we head to the fourth quarter. Taya Morgan has it on the wing, trying to hand it off to Jones. Jones has been huge for Dodge today. Missed that one. Rebound Kylie Ortiz. Ravens get a stop. Now trying to close the gap. Down 14. Kylie. Crossover, trying to attack Santa Catarina, hands it off the layup, no from Black Harmon. Couldn't finish inside, it was a great look off a great screen from Kylie. And now on the other end, here's Paris Atkins trying to attack. Pass high, what a catch by Morgan. And Morgan had a poke from behind, back-to-back -back turnovers. Ravens get back-to-back -back stops. Here's Janae Black Harmon. Hands off to Natalia Jones. Jones driving, hands off to Ivy. Ivy thought about the three, now we will look for a pass. Natalia, 10 to shoot, Natalia attacks Atkins. Ivy at the free throw line, nice ball fake by Ivy Fox and she scores again. It's a 12 point game, back to back scores for Coffeyville. Can they get it down to single digits in the final two minutes of this third quarter? Santa Catarina hands off to Jordan. Jordan trying to get it down low to Jones. 
That's deflected out of bounds off of Coffeyville. And now we see Preston check in. Timeout taken. We'll take it with them. We're back in 60 seconds. Ravens down a dozen late third quarter. We're back in 60 on US 98 and the Red Ravens Sports Network. In many styles, brands, and colors, new furniture always brightens a home. We have a great selection of furniture, including sofa sets, recliners, and mattresses. Economy to premium, in stock and ready to brighten your home. Shop now at your local derailed commodity flooring and furniture. Brazelton in Independence, Kansas, and Joplin in Butler, Missouri. You have a choice on where to go and who you want to be. Here at Coffeyville Community College, you can be you. We can make you workforce ready at one of our technical campuses, be a student athlete, join an honors program or an activity, have a voice with student government, and be involved with student life events. Our school believes in our red and white traditions, providing you with a quality education and preparing you for the next journey in life. Once you experience our campus, you know you've made the right choice. Let us help you. Dodge City basketball, late third quarter. Jones, the fake, tries to go baseline, lost the ball. And now six to shoot here for Dodge. Santa Catarina has it. Gets a screen. Going to have to send it. Two seconds left. Jones sends the three. Missed it. Ravens get the rebound. They get another stop. Down by a dozen. Bailey Lehman crosses half court. Hands off to Richardson. Richardson walks it up. Now works right to Natalia Jones. Jones works it to Ivy Fox. Top of the key. Hand off to Janae Black Harmon. Harmon hands off to Richardson. Ravens trying to create some separation. Ray to Janae. Janae to Ivy. Ivy scored the last four points. Goes up. Got it. And one. Ivy Fox heating up late third quarter. And it's a 10-point game with a free throw to come. Ivy Fox was kept relatively quiet in the first half. Just one of seven shooting. She has found her groove in this third quarter. It's a nine-point game. The last seven points for the Ravens, scored by number 14. Raven defense trying to keep putting together stops. Tatana Woods Black Owl moves to the scorer's table. Preston guarded by Black Harmon. This is Atkins with Dodge City up by nine. They led by 17 just moments ago. Paris Santa Catarina cut off by Richardson. Hands off to Jordan, five to shoot. Jordan nearly lost it. And a foul is called late in the shot clock against Black Harmon. And I don't, that was not the, not a call that made the people at Nellis Hall a fan of the refs. I was, I mean, there's definitely a chance that there was a hand on a wrist from, hard to see from where we were at, but from where we were at, it looked pretty clean. I'm not going to lie. Santa Catarina inbound to Cameron. Cameron playing with three fouls. Hands it off to Jones. Jones the attack. Jones goes up. Missed it. Fox with the defense. Still a loose ball. Ivy comes away with it. Ravens with the ball. There's about a three-second difference between shot clock and game clock. Coffeyville down nine. Bailey Lehman. Lehman looking for a pass. Bailey gets it to Janae. Janae attacking baseline. Goes up. Blocked from behind by Preston. Big shot block there by the freshman. And she's done that a couple times this afternoon. Atkins, Dodge can hold for the final shot if they choose. Cameron, Preston, five to shoot. That pass is high with three and a half left. Dodge City's offense starting to struggle. There's about four seconds here for the Ravens to get a shot. We'll see what Coffeyville decides to do. Do they want to try and get a shot up? Do they want to just take this momentum to the fourth quarter? They've cut a 17-point deficit down to nine. Lehman makes the catch. Bailey from half court. Bailey steps into one. Bailey left it just a hair short. We'll go to the fourth quarter. Dodge City 49, Coffeyville 40. Looks like the Ravens were starting to lose hope. They battled back. We've got a ball game going to the final 10 minutes. We're back in 60 seconds on US 98 and the Red Ravens Sports Network.
Caregivers are prepared to help you with laundry, meals, housekeeping, shopping, and more. These helpful services are so reasonably priced, you can afford to pay for them yourself. In many cases, long-term care insurance or other sources provide assistance with the cost. Home is where the help is. Call Windsor Place at Home Care, 800-982-1866. Make your home more comforting with help from Derailed Commodity. Update your flooring with the area's largest selection of in-stock carpet, luxury vinyl plank, tile, area rugs, and more in many styles, brands, and colors. New furniture always brightens a home. We have a great selection of furniture, including sofa sets, recliners, and mattresses. Economy to premium, in stock and ready to brighten your home. Shop now at your local Derailed Commodity Flooring and Furniture, Brazelton in Independence, Kansas, and Joplin and Butler, Missouri. Ravens trail 49-40 as we move to the... On a nice little run, they trailed 47-30 to and ended that third quarter on a 10-2 run. So Ravens have gotten themselves back into it. It's a nine-point game, but still work to do as Dodge City still winning the rebound battle, still dishing out more assists. The Ravens did start forcing some turnovers, though, and found out found something defensively that seemed to work. So we'll see if they can... Continue that momentum here as we start the final 10 minutes. Tatano with Blackout, hands off Bailey Lehman. Now Kylie Ortiz. Quick ball movement here by the Ravens. Fox attacks again. Fox got going late third quarter. She scores again. It's a seven point game. Ivy Fox again. She has scored nine straight points for the Ravens. And there's a foul against Kylie Ortiz. Kylie called for her second foul. Dodge City basketball, we're 30 seconds into the fourth quarter. Conquistadors up by seven. Taya Morgan tries to attack on Kylie, throws it up, what a shot. Finished with the left hand, that's a very difficult shot by Morgan. Tatana hands off to Lehman, Lehman looking to get inside. Lehman hands off to Fox. Fox has scored nine straight points for Coffeyville. Now Janae Black Harmon back to Fox. Fox again attacks. This time trying to get it to Lehman. That one jumped by Atkins. And Dodge City with a huge play defensively. And they're back up by 11. to go. Natalia Jones moves to the scorer's table. Black Harmon hands off Ortiz. And Kylie, that's going to be an offensive foul called against the Ravens. It'll go against Janae Black Harmon on a moving screen. Black Harmon subbed out. We'll see the return of Natalia Jones. Alexis Parker playing with four fouls. So Black Harmon's had to be utilized more frequently than maybe most people expect. Atkins, nice move inside. Left it short, however. Rebound Ravens. Coffeyville gets a stop. They're down 11. Still got work to do. Tatana crossover left. Tries to hand it off to Fox. Fox, that one was deflected and stolen by Preston. Atkins full head of steam in transition. Lays it in. And two key turnovers. And the lead has gone from 9 to 13. Ortiz, nice handoff to Fox. And a quick score for Coffeyville. 55-44, 55-44, eight minutes to go. Dodge City by 11. Jones. Santa Catarina. With the pass left. Jones spinning at the free throw line, hands it off to Preston. Nice ball fake. But it's a shot clock violation. Preston with a heck of a shot fake, but I think the shot fake worked because there was only one second on the shot clock. So it'll be Raven basketball, seven and a half to play. They're down by 11. Woods Blackout brings it up. And off to Bailey Lehman. Lehman works it to Karras. Karras driving, Karras kicking, Natalia Jones, Lehman. Now Kylie has it. Ravens have 12 to shoot. Quick passes by Coffeyville. That's been a theme in this second half. 
Bailey the attack, Bailey throws it up, a lot of contact, no foul call. So seven minutes to go, Ravens thought they surely had a foul drawn there, did not get the call, now need a stop on defense. Atkins, Morgan off a screen, sends a three, almost stepped into it, missed it. Rebound taken by Tatana. Tatana all the way inside, and they do call a foul on that one. That'll be against Jones. Layla J. Cameron back in as Preston goes to have a conversation with Landon Steele. That's the first foul against Jones this, year, this afternoon. Now Tatana at the free throw line. First one up and good. 6.41 to play. Second free throw on the way for the sophomore point guard out of El Reno. She can cut it to nine. She missed it. And uh, that'll be a foul against Natalia Jones on it over the back. Natalia went for the offensive rebound. A little bit too much of a shove there to the back of Kiriana Jones. 6.34 to play. Dodge City up by 10. Coffeyville's gotten it down to as little as 5 in the second half, but Dodge City's been in control. Layla J. Cameron on the right wing trying to get a pass inside to Preston. That's going to be another foul against the Ravens. It'll be on Natalia Jones. That's her third. And now one more foul, and Dodge City's in the bonus for the rest of this game. Santa Catarina will inbound it to Layla J. Cameron. Cameron hands it off. Atkins. Atkins trying to get it down low to Preston. Preston goes up, lays it in. Tough finish inside for Sh Shorna Preston. Dodge City by a dozen. Kylie Ortiz working quickly right at Santa Catarina. Draws contact. Foul will be on Santa Catarina. Kylie Ortiz will go to the free throw line with 6.07 to play. Ivy Fox back in for the Ravens. Coming in for Bailey Lehman. And the sophomore Kylie Ortiz at the free throw line. First one is good. Two for two for Kylie Ortiz. It's a 10 point game. Dodge City is going to dribble it under six minutes to play. 57-47, Conquistadors the lead. Paris Atkins trying to get it down low. That one was deflected by Karis Washington. And she stepped on the baseline. That's a turnover by Dodge City. A mistake by Jones, who's really played a great game today. Tatana all the way inside, no good. Fox got a hand on it. Out of bounds, last touch by the Ravens. So both teams empty on their last possession. 57-47, still 5.42 to go. Ravens looking for that 18th win of the season. Dodge City looking to improve to 24-4. This has been one of the league's Probably two best programs the last two years in Dodge City. Landon Steele's done a heck of a job with this team. They've broken many program records in the last two years. Santa Catarina, huge shot. It is good. And that is a big-time all-conference guard hitting a big-time all-conference shot. 60-47, to 5.17 to go. Tatana's pass deflected by Preston. Fox got a hand on it, but it ends up with Santa Catarina, who finds Atkins and a quick five-point turnaround for the Dodge City Conquistadors. Kylie looking for a screen. Ravens down 15 now. Seems like one heck of a mountain to climb. Nice dish to Fox. Kylie Ortiz to Ivy Fox. Ivy's been the best player for the Ravens in the second half. Layla J. Cameron hands off to Atkins, 62-49. The drive, the kick, Preston lays it in. And Dodge City's offense may just be too much. 
on this Saturday afternoon to overcome a double-digit deficit. Tatana, step back, jump shot. That's off the rim, no good. Fox runs down the rebound. Ivy attacking, got Preston in the air, throws it up and got it. Ivy Fox has been very, very good in the second half. Jones, quick three for Dodge. That one off the rim, no good. And Natalia Jones runs down the rebound. And that's, that's not really, I don't think, what Landon Steele wants, burning a possession in just about eight seconds when you're up by double digits with four minutes to go. Kylie, nice ball fake. Fox, the hot hand. And can't get the bounce on that one. Out of bounds, last touch by Dodge City. 3.57 to go. Mia Jordan will check in. It's a media timeout, our final of game one. Ravens down 64-51. We're back in 60 seconds on US 98 and the Red Ravens Sports Network. A heaping bowl filled with Mexican favorites and literally erupting with filet mignon. The filet ole steak bowl can be yours if you make it past Chuck Steak Canyon and the deadly sirloin abyss. Filet mignon beckons, my friend, on the meaty, mighty pinnacle of beefdom. The filet ole steak bowl from Taco Mayo. Welcome to Meat Mountain. Got a car? Maybe a motorcycle or even a boat. Do you rent or own your own home? If you have any of these, call NDB and Coffeeville and then relax. NDB can protect your assets and save you money. They represent numerous insurance companies so that they can help you find the right insurance at the right price for you. NDB at 812 West 11th in Coffeeville. Call Ben Veets at 620-251-1970 and relax. Four minutes to go in game one of our doubleheader. Ravens trail 64-51 to Dodge City. I'm Shane Neal. It's US 98 and the Red Ravens Sports Network. So happy you're with us here on this Saturday afternoon. Of course, coming up in game two, we have another big one between Dodge City and Coffeyville. Both those teams separated by just a half game for a home playoff game in the Region 6 tournament. So that's a huge one for playoff implications. Kylie Ortiz hands off Bailey Lehman. Lehman the drive, the kick to Natalia Jones. Ravens down 13, got to move quickly. Karis Washington hands off to Natalia. Nine to shoot. Natalia to Lehman. Lehman the fake. Lehman gets a screen. Bailey hands it off to Karis. Karis the attack. Karis is double team. Got to get it off. One second left, and they're not going to get it off. 3.36 to go. A shot clock violation as Washington and Lehman were playing a little bit of hot potato. And nobody wanted to take the shot. Three and a half to play. Dodge City basketball, 64-51. Morgan hands off Atkins. Atkins to Cameron on the left wing. Cameron guarded. It's his own look for the Ravens. 15 seconds left on the shot clock. Santa Catarina, the all-conference point guard. Hands off to Atkins. 10 to shoot for Dodge. Down low to Jordan. Jordan got a step, and Washington comes in and helps draw the travel. Karras with a great help defense. Mia Jordan turns it over. Ivy Fox moves back to the scorer's table. Got a very quick breather, but obviously with how good she's been in the second half, they're going to need her for the final stretch. Ivy will come in at the next dead ball. Here's Tatana finding Kylie. Kylie to Bailey. Ravens might need one of Ortiz or Lehman to Start taking some threes and hope they start dropping. Natalia Jones gets to the baseline, goes up, fouled from behind. With 2.48 to go. That'll be on, excuse me, Layla J. Cameron, they call the foul on. That's her fourth. And a key starter for, a key starter for Dodge City now with four fouls. Natalia Jones going to the free throw line. She's three of four at the stripe today. Natalia's really turned herself into quality rotation piece for this team. She misses the first free throw. But was a state champion in high school. Obviously was a part of the team that went to the region championship game a year ago. She's done a nice job of winning everywhere she's been in her basketball career, and she'll hope that'll continue into the postseason this year. But the Ravens down by a dozen with 2.40 to go. Pass to Cameron. Extra pass in a Katarina. The sophomore left it short. Out of bounds, Raven basketball and an empty possession for Dodge. 2.36 to go. Santa Catarina was looking for a dagger there. Did not sink it. The 
Ravens bring it up. Two and a half to play. They're down by 12. 64-52, Dodge City. Tatana, the drive, the kick. Natalia fakes. Natalia to Lehman off a screen. Lehman to Tatana. Ravens don't have much time to be burning shot clocks here at this point of the game. Down by 12. Tatana, pass to Kylie. Got to get a shot. Five to shoot, Fox down low, Ivy spinning, getting to the baseline, and is fouled with 2.07 to go. That's a lot of clock to burn. The foul was on Jordan. The Ravens had the ball with about 2.35 and burn it all the way down to 2.07. When you're down by double digits, I just, I don't know if you're, that was what you were looking for. I think you kind of are looking more for 15, point pos or 15 second possessions at this point in the game. First one no good from Fox. One more free throw to come. Ivy's been great in the second half. She hits the second free throw. 64-53. Dodge City can dribble it under two minutes to go. They lead it by 11 on the road. Long trip home for the Conquistadors. They're trying to make it a fun one. Jones pull up jump shot. Rimmed out. Tatana got a hand on it. Got the rebound. Ravens get a stop. Down by 11. You got to go quick. A minute 48. Tatana. The drive, and Woods Black all the way laid it in. Nine point game, Tatana with the finish in traffic. Woods Black Owl and a timeout taken by Landon Steele. Minute 36 to go, let's take a quick 30 second break. We'll be right back, Ravens down nine with a minute 36 to go. We're back in 30 seconds on US 98, the Red Ravens Sports Network. of caring for our friends and neighbors. We are your regional healthcare system, caring for Southeast Kansas and Northeast Oklahoma. With comprehensive technology and experienced medical staff, caring medical professionals and a 24 hour emergency room staffed with emergency medicine physicians. We are people you know and healthcare you trust. For more information, visit our website, crmcinc.org. When you need to rely on Ravens down 64-55 with a minute 36 to go. 98, the Red Ravens Sports Network. Coffeyville has been down double digits for most of the second half. They got it down to five early in the second half, but Dodge City responded with a 14-2 run. Since then, the Ravens have been playing from down double digits. They've gotten it down to nine. But Dodge City trying to hang on here on the road. They have the basketball. Inbound goes to Santa Catarina. Double team comes. Ravens try to trap. And nearly got a steal there. It ends up with Jones. Now Layla J. Cameron. Cameron looking for a pass. Down to Jordan. Jordan hands it off to Atkins. Dodge trying to burn some clock. A minute 18 to go. That was deflected by Lehman. That one deflected by Fox. And it goes off of Bailey Lehman out of bounds. Six seconds left on the shot clock. It will stay with Dodge City. Dodge has six seconds to get a shot off, and you feel like at this point of the game, any score could really be the dagger. Here's Layla J. Cameron for three, and that one is off the rim, no good, so no dagger yet. Cameron tried to keep it alive, could not, out of bounds to the Ravens with a minute 10 to play. Down by nine. With a minute 10 left, you feel like, like I said, any score for Dodge the rest of the way really makes it difficult for Coffeyville to win this game. Natalia Jones inbounds to Tatana. Ravens got to go quick. Minute eight to go. Down by nine. 64-55. Tatana works right. Hands off to Lehman. Lehman guarded well by Atkins. Fox the spin. Fox goes up. Left it short. And an empty possession at this point of the game might do it. Santa Catarina. The, Tony Turner says to foul, and they do. Santa Catarina will go to the line with 53 seconds to go. Tana called for her first two free throws coming for Paris at Can Arena. She's an 85% free throw shooter. First one is good. And the Ravens have fought. They have battled. They have not given in to what is a really, really good basketball team. But it looks like, barring some sort of Nellis Hall miracle on this Saturday afternoon, it might not quite be enough. Time out on the floor. Let's take a quick 30 seconds here in the booth. We'll be back right after this with the Ravens down 11 on US 98 and the Red Ravens Sports Network. Hearing 
for our friends and neighbors. We are your regional health care system, caring for Southeast Kansas and Northeast Oklahoma. With comprehensive technology and experienced medical staff, caring medical professionals, and a 24-hour emergency room staffed with emergency medicine physicians, we are people you know and health care you trust. For more information, visit our website, crmcinc.org. Ravens down 66-55 with 53 seconds to play. I'm Shane Neal, US 98 and the Red Raven Sports Network. So happy you're with us here for this Saturday afternoon doubleheader. We've got, of course, another game coming for you right after this one's over as we see both the Conquistadors and the Raven men's team starting to make their way to the entrance to Nellis Hall. They'll be taking the floor here in just a moment. Kylie Ortiz, the pass cross court to Natalia Jones. Tatana has it now. Ravens got to go quick. Tatana throws it up, draws a foul. 43 seconds left, and that's that's something I I want to I look forward to asking Coach Turner in the post game. Is I know that you know when you're down by double digits, it's obviously easier said than done to have quick possessions and try to close the gap. But we've now seen three or four possessions in this final two three minutes where the Ravens have used 20 25 seconds of the shot clock and. Maybe if you're down by three or four, that's okay, but I think you'd want more like 15-second possessions, and I'd assume Coach Turner was looking for that as well. First free throw is good from Woods Blackow. Makes it 66 to 56. One more free throw to come, 43.4 to go. And Tatana knocks down the pair. And another timeout. We'll stay here this time. 66-57, our score. Like I said, the Royals in action in spring training officially underway today. Uh, I should have said Royals' first spring training game was yesterday. They fell 5-4 to four in that game to the Texas Rangers. Today they're up 2 to nothing in the bottom of the fifth. Royals pitching has been very sharp so far today with the uh, trio of Brandon, uh, Alec Marsh, Anthony Veneziano, and Josh Taylor pitching five scoreless innings, five strikeouts, only allowed four hits. And uh, for the Royals, they have five hits, two runs. Michael Garcia goes two for three. He's expected to be the Royals' everyday third baseman this year. Nick Prado with a hit as well today, as and uh, two uh, two trips on base for the uh, young catcher Logan Porter. So some players that have really stood out for the Royals today. They look to get their first win of the spring this afternoon against the Texas Rangers. K State also in action. K uh, Kansas Jayhawks pregame show just started over on Greatest Hits 104.1. The Wildcats are taking on BYU. Looking to get back in the win column at Bramlage Coliseum. They were up by 13 with about eight minutes to go. And they look to close out that Cougars team uh, of BYU. And uh, they were able to do that with an 84-74 victory. So K-State back in the win column. They get their 16th win of the year. And a much-needed win for their tournament hopes. There's a foul against the Ravens with 41 seconds to go. And free throws coming for Coffeyville Or for Dodge, excuse me, after the foul by Coffeyville Number two, Tatana with blackout. Fox comes in for Parker. Ivy Fox in, as is Kylie Ortiz. So it's Woods Blackow, Ortiz, Lehman, Jones, and Fox. Free throw for Paris, Santa Catarina is good. Second free throw up and is also pure. 68-57 now and another timeout taken. A chess match between these coaches. Ravens call timeout. Let's take a quick 60-second break. Coffeeville down 68-57. We're back in 60 seconds on US 98 and the Red Raven Sports Network. And then relax. numerous insurance companies so that they can help you find the right insurance at the right price for you. NDB at 812 West 11th in Coffeyville. Call Ben Veets at 620-251-1970 and relax. Taco Mayo's new filet ole steak bowl is piled high with fillet mignon. It's filet mignon. A heaping bowl loaded with refried beans, Mexicali rice, cheddar jack, sour cream, and tender filet mignon. It's filet mignon. Filet mignon. A uh, filet mignon. Filet mignon. Filet mignon. Savor the juicy filet ole steak bowl stacked with filet mignon.
Make sure you start to stay tuned after the conclusion of this one as we'll hear from Coach Turner on the post-game show. We'll also hear from Coach Herkelman as we get ready for game two of our doubleheader this afternoon. 68-57 Dodge City with 41 seconds to go. Ravens got to go. Inbounds goes to Natalia Jones. Jones takes a couple dribbles to her right. Hands off to Woods Blackout. Right back to Natalia. Sends the three and missed it off the back of the iron. Rebound taken by Jones. And now we'll see Tatana foul once again with now 30 seconds left. And that might pretty much do it in this one. It will be more free throws coming for Dodge City. And it will now be Kiriana Jones at the line. Jones has probably been their best all-around player here today. First free throw is good. One more free throw to come for Jones. And got them both. Tana brings it up, 25 seconds left, 70 to 57. Jones makes the catch on the left wing. Ravens got to get a shot up, 20 seconds left. They hand off to Ortiz, Ortiz for three. It's off the rim, no good. Rebound Jordan. Atkins will dribble it up, and that should do it. Dodge City comes to Coffeyville and gets the win against the Lady Ravens, 70 to 57, the final score in this one. Coffeyville will fall to 17 and 10 on the season. Dodge City now 24 and 4. The Ravens come up short against Dodge City. They go 0 and 2 against the Conquistadors here this year in the regular season, but that's what they did last year as well. Got the win over Dodge in the playoffs. So we'll see if there is a third matchup to come between these two teams. But again, our final score Dodge City 70, Coffeyville 57. Let's step away for six minutes. We'll be back with final stats and a talk with Coach Turner when we come back in six minutes on US 98 and the Red Ravens Sports Network. including sofa sets, recliners, and mattresses. Economy to premium, in stock and ready to brighten your home. Shop now at your local derailed commodity flooring and furniture. Brazelton in Independence, Kansas, and Joplin and Butler, Missouri. This is Meat Mountain, and up there on the summit awaits the all-new filet o -Lay steak bowl from Taco Mayo. A heaping bowl filled with Mexican favorites and literally erupting with filet mignon. The filet ole steak bowl can be yours if you make it past Chuck Steak Canyon and the deadly sirloin abyss. Filet mignon beckons, my friend, on the meaty, mighty pinnacle of beefdom. The filet ole steak bowl from Taco Mayo. Welcome to Meat Mountain. Got a car? Maybe a motorcycle or even a boat. Do you rent or own your own home? If you have any of these, call NDB in Coffeyville and then relax. NDB can protect your assets and save you money. They represent numerous insurance companies so that they can help you find the right insurance at the right price for you. NDB at 812 West 11th in Coffeyville. Call Ben Veets at 620-251-1970 and relax. Coffeyville Regional Medical Center, we take seriously our responsibility of caring for our friends and neighbors. We are your regional health care system, caring for Southeast Kansas and Northeast Oklahoma. With comprehensive technology and experienced medical staff, caring medical professionals, and a 24-hour emergency room staffed with emergency medicine physicians, we are people you know and health care you trust. For more information, visit our website crmcinc.org When you need to rely on a nursing facility for the care of a loved one, wouldn't it be comforting to know that the owner is providing the care? Owner Stephanie Bean with Medical Lodges is proud to supply that tender care in Coffeyville. Skilled nursing services, rehabilitation, adult daycare, and much more are all offered. Visit medicallodges.com or stop by 2921 West 1st in Coffeyville and learn more. Medical Lodges Coffeeville, where they serve and enhance the lives of others with caring hands. This is Community State Bank at Work. 
This is Community State Bank at Work, in our community. From kids' activities to school programs to funding home and business loans, every day, Community State Bank is at work in our neighborhood. Whether you bank at Community State Bank or not, they're working for you every day. Community State Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. I'm Mike Avey, and at Community State Bank, we believe in Coffeeville. You have a choice on where to go and who you want to be. Here at Coffeeville Community College, you can be you. We can make you workforce ready at one of our technical campuses, be a student athlete, join an honors program or an activity, have a voice with student government, and be involved with student life events. Our school believes in our red and white traditions, providing you with a quality education and preparing you for the next journey in life. Once you experience our campus, you know you've made the right choice. Let us help you Make our story your story and become Raven Proud. If you could use a little help around the house, Windsor Place at-home care is the perfect solution for you. Their caregivers are prepared to help you with laundry, meals, housekeeping, shopping, and more. These helpful services are so reasonably priced, you can afford to pay for them yourself. In many cases, long-term care insurance or other sources provide assistance with the cost. Home is where the help is. Call Windsor Place at-home care. 800-982-1866. Make your home more comforting with help from Derailed Commodity. Update your flooring with the area's largest selection of in-stock carpet, luxury vinyl plank, tile, area rugs, and more in many styles, brands, and colors. New furniture always brightens a home. We have a great selection of furniture, including sofa sets, recliners, and mattresses. Economy to premium, in stock and ready to brighten your home. Shop now at your local Derailed Commodity Flooring and Furniture, Brazelton in Independence, Kansas, and Joplin in Butler, Missouri. Tonko Mayo's new. I would fill it, me not. And tender filet mignon. It's filet mignon. Filet mignon. Uh, filet mignon. Filet mignon. Filet mignon. Savor the juicy filet ole steak bowl stacked with filet mignon and only from Tonko Mayo. That's a wrap. No, that's a bowl. If you could use solution for you. Their caregivers are prepared to help you with laundry, meals, housekeeping, shopping, and more. These helpful services are so reasonably priced, you can afford to pay for them yourself. In many cases, long-term care insurance or other sources provide assistance with the cost. Home is where the help is. Call Windsor Place at Home Care, 800-982-1866. You have a choice on where to go and who you want to be. Here at Coffeeville Community College, you can be you. We can make you workforce ready at one of our technical campuses, be a student athlete, join an honors program or an activity, have a voice with student government, and be involved with student life events. Our school believes in our red and white traditions, providing you with a quality education and preparing you for the next journey in life. Once you experience our campus, you know you've made the right choice. Let us help you make our story your story and become Raven Proud. If you could use a little help around the house, Windsor Place at-home care is the perfect solution for you. Their caregivers are prepared to help you with laundry, meals, housekeeping, shopping, and more. These helpful services are so reasonably priced, you can afford to pay for them yourself. In many cases, long-term care insurance or other sources provide assistance with the cost. Home is where the help is. Call Windsor Place at-home care 800-982-1866. Lady Ravens fall in game one of our doubleheader, 70 to 57 the final. Coffeeville unable to climb back after falling into a second half, uh, double digit second half deficit. Let's look at the final stats from game one. Dodge City ends up shooting 45% from the floor, 23% from three, 76% at the line. For the Ravens, 36% from the field, 31% from three, and 71% at the line. Leading the way for Dodge City, 18 points for Kiriana Jones, 17 points for Paris Santa Catarina, eight points for Layla J. Cameron, seven points for Shorna Preston, eight points for Paris Atkins as well. 
Uh, Don City really got some nice uh, depth scoring. Uh, with those two, of course, having 18 and 17, but you see 8-8-7-6-6 eight, eight, six, six from five other players. That's obviously going to help you win a lot of basketball games as we move into the second half of the season. For the Ravens today, 22 points for Ivy Fox, 10 points for Kylie Ortiz, 8 for Bailey Lehman, 7 for uh, Tatana Woods Blackout as well, 6 for Natalia Jones. But not quite as much depth on the offensive end for the Ravens today as Dodge City had. So we look at the rebound battle where Dodge City won 39-31. Coffeyville did clean up uh, the offensive rebounds in the second half, but Dodge City still able to hold a slim margin there. Dodge City also dished out 16 assists. The Ravens dished out 10. 13 turnovers uh, for the Ravens, 12 turnovers for the Conquistadors. Second chance points, really a huge uh, separator in this one as well. 11 second chance points for Coffeyville, or excuse me, for Dodge City, only two for Coffeyville. Uh, Ravens did, uh, you, you look at this, and I, I look forward to asking Coach Turner here in a little bit, but you look you look at this game and you don't see a bad performance from the Ravens. The Ravens did not play poorly. The, the percentages maybe should be a little higher, but uh, they're not bad percentages by any means. Uh, they they held their own on the rebound battle. They only committed 13 turnovers. They you know they uh, you know they had their uh, some of their star players step up, but this Dodge City team, I'll tell you, there's not much room for error against the Conquistadors. Uh, so that is uh, really what I think we learned this afternoon. I don't think Coffeyville played poorly. I think they could have played better for sure, but I think we learned that you need to play near flawlessly if you're going to beat Dodge City in 2024. Coach Turner uh, should be joining us. We'll see. Uh, I know sometimes, uh, you know, they end up spending a lot of time in the locker room. We'll see if we have enough time to get to them before we get to game two of our doubleheader. But let's take another quick little three-minute break. When we come back, we're going to get you some scores from around the league, final scores on the ladies' side, and uh, we'll get ready for game two of this doubleheader. We're back in three minutes on US 98 for Red Ravens Sports Network. Tile, area rugs, and more in many styles, brands, and colors. New furniture always brightens a home. We have a great selection of furniture, including sofa sets, recliners, and mattresses. Economy to premium, in stock and ready to brighten your home. Shop now at your local derailed commodity flooring and furniture. Brazelton in Independence, Kansas, and Joplin and Butler, Missouri. This is Meat Mountain, and up there on the summit awaits the all-new filet lay steak bowl from Taco Mayo. A heaping bowl filled with Mexican favorites and literally erupting with filet mignon. The filet lay steak bowl can be yours if you make it past Chuck Steak Canyon and the deadly sirloin abyss. Filet mignon beckons, my friend, on the meaty, mighty pinnacle of beefdom. The filet lay steak bowl from Taco Mayo. Welcome to Meat Mountain. Got a car? Maybe a motorcycle or even a boat. Do you rent or own your own home? If you have any of these, call NDB in Coffeyville and then relax. NDB can protect your assets and save you money. They represent numerous insurance companies so that they can help you find the right insurance at the right price for you. NDB at 812 West 11th in Coffeyville. Call Ben Veets at 620-251-1970 and relax. 